As Sarco International Incorporated, a public health company, licenses and markets this patented multi-use truck. Unless you are the sort of Land Rover enthusiast that knows your Minivas from your Tickfords and your Cuthbertsons from your Carmichaels, the word Isarco is unlikely to mean much to you, such is the rarity of this strange machine. Seeing one of these vehicles in the wild is a rare event. Seeing one come up for sale is an even rarer event. In fact, this footage is one of only two known videos covering the Isarco on the entirety of the internet. That is, until now. So when the request came from a friend to assist in the retrieval and restoration of one of these rare beasts, I jumped at the opportunity and brought my cameras with me to document the story for all of Land Rover kind to see. This is the Steg. Some say he survived four years of an engineering degree only eating Frey Bentos pies and that he was once the sheriff of a small town in Morocco. But in reality, he's a bloke from Cheshire who has a big soft spot for rare and unloved vehicles. So far, his collection includes, but is not limited to, a 1951 Scammell Explorer, a variety of classic tractors, a small fleet of classic British trucks and enough old Land Rovers to start a small museum. So to him, driving halfway across the country collecting ancient and rusty pieces of British automotive history is nothing out of the ordinary. That said, the object of today's journey is anything but ordinary. Bombing Standing Airport. But first, that runway was hit by one of 21 bombs from a lone Vulcan bomber, flying from Ascension and being refueled seven times on the way. As a helicopter pilot in the Falklands War, Major Michael Summerton Rayner had seen the incredibly tough conditions faced by the ground vehicles of the time. He saw that the regular Land Rover Series 3s and 101s struggled with the boggy, marshy terrain of the Falkland Islands, and indeed, one Colonel I.J. Helberg of the time was quoted saying, the force was discouraged from taking any vehicles as there were no roads on the Falkland Islands. The only exception was a Volvo BV202 snow vehicle that could cope with the soft peat. Upon returning to the UK, Major Summerton Rayner set about designing a vehicle that could cross the harshest of terrains and yet still be able to travel at high speed on the road. That vehicle was to become the Asarco. Well, it's going to be second in the Asarco, in the 8x8 Asarco, it is Joey Dunlop. With the drivetrain taken almost exclusively from the Land Rover 110, the Asarco was truly a child of the 80s. Land Rover 110. Available in either 6x6 or 8x8 variants, the Asako could carry up to two tons of equipment across any terrain imaginable. With a breakover angle of over 90 degrees and a climbing ability of 45 degrees, there weren't many obstacles that could stop an Asako with a determined driver. 
An article in Off-Road and Four-Wheel Drive magazine from 1989 described how the Asako floated effortlessly over terrain that would stop a normal 4x4 dead in its tracks. Those wise in the ways of four-wheel drive off-roaders will brace themselves for the expected bone-shaking shocks of rapidly approaching hazards, only to feel slightly foolish and disbelieving as they pass almost unnoticed beneath the vehicle's wheels. Although the Asako was arguably the best performing light truck of its day, it was never adopted by the British Army, and aside from a small number sold to the Portuguese military, the Asako was destined to remain a prototype forever. And that is where the Steg comes in. As a serial classic military vehicle owner, the Steg has the time, knowledge and equipment needed to bring a vehicle like this back to life. Assisting him will be Sam Allman from Allman Commercial Repairs. As a vintage commercial vehicle enthusiast and a talented HGV fitter, Sam will be invaluable on this project. And then there's me. An engineer by trade, I enjoy fiddling around with Land Rovers in their many forms, and I have been known from time to time to make a little video clip on them, here and there. Between us, we should have the skills and experience needed to take on this mammoth project. As a relatively unknown prototype, the restoration of the Isarco will be no mean feat. Many of its key components, such as the chassis and bodywork, were handmade and have no off-the-shelf replacements available. One small mercy is that the drivetrain is completely based on Land Rover components, something that all three of us have a lot of experience with. Even so, awakening this beast from its 20-year slumber will be a huge task. In a previous life, this Asako served as a sea defense vehicle carrying one-ton blocks of concrete up and down Chroma Beach and suffering horribly from the salt. And this once shining example of British engineering has been reduced to a creaking, rusted hulk. So far in the project, we've completely stripped the Asako back to its bare chassis, removing all four Land Rover axles, two transfer boxes, and the old VM diesel engine in the process. In order to faithfully recreate some of the rusted panels and chassis sections, we utilised advanced 3D scanning technology to create a complete digital model of the Asako chassis, which will be invaluable in creating new repair panels and sections. We hope you enjoyed this short presentation and invite you guys to ask us any questions you may have about the build. Thanks for watching.